What's up guys, welcome back to another Unreal Engine 5 tutorial. In today's video, I will show you how to script an interactive light switch using Blueprint. In order to accomplish this, the player will overlap a switch in the environment, which has a reference to a series of light actors. The switch will have an interactive UI, which will allow the players to turn the light on and off. Let's jump in. Before we start, I'll show you how this appears in game. The player can approach a light, it will show an icon on screen. They can press a key on the keyboard to then turn the light on and off, and the next action will change as indicated. All right, let's learn how to do this. So in our content drawer, we'll create two new assets. We'll right click, create a new blueprint class of type actor. We will call this BP underscore simple light switch. We will also create a new blueprint interface, which we'll call BPI underscore simple interaction. I'll click into my blueprint interface first. Here, I'll create a new function, which we will call interact with world object. And this is an interface function we could put on any blueprint we want to interact with by using the key that we'll add in our character we can interact with a variety of objects in a variety of ways. First, let's apply this to our simple light switch. I'll double click and we will, in our class settings, go to implemented interface and we will type BPI underscore simple interaction, the interaction we just made. We'll see now in the left side that we have a new function to choose from under interfaces. You can click this to open it up if it is hidden. But when we right click and say implement event, this is the function we will call from our character to execute the light on and off on operation in this blueprint. First, we're going to add a series of components that we'll use in this blueprint. In the top left, I will say add, and I will first add a sphere collision, then I will add a cube and I will add finally a billboard. In my viewport, I'll select my cube first. I'm going to change the scale of this to 0 0.25, 0 0.5, and we'll leave that for now. So this is going to be the back plate of our light switch. So this will be the 3D geometry that we see in the world. I'll grab my sphere collision and I'll set the sphere radius of this in the details panel to 250. This will be the sort of overlap zone that once the player enters, they will be able to interact with this blueprint. And then finally, we have our billboard, which will, will be what we're going to use to show the sort of um, availability of the interaction and what's going to happen next. So it's looking for a sprite and a sprite really is just a texture, but I'm going to type S underscore light. And for the default texture, we're going to use this S underscore point light, just because it's a little light bulb and kind of tells us what we need to know. I'm going to change the absolute scale of this sprite to 0.5, just to make it a little smaller. If we compile and save. We'll be able to throw one of these into our environment and see how it works. So we'll make sure that it is rotated outwards. The sprite currently uh, exists in 3D space, so even if we hop on the other side of this wall, we're not going to see it rendered. Um, and, you know, in the future, it might be smart to add sort of a UI that shows on top of other surfaces, but for now, we're going to use a sprite. So right now, there's no script in here, so we can play, but obviously, nothing's going to happen. And let's continue. We'll start by making first the billboard not hidden in game. So we'll click this true boolean to false. And then now we're going to add some logic in our event graph. So what we're going to do is the, the script will work as follows. On event begin play, we'll get a reference to an array of lights that we've put on our blueprint. We'll turn them off and we'll cache their intensities. And then when this is interacted with, we will test is the light on or is the light off and set the intensity of the reference lights accordingly. And then we'll add some overlap logic for basically um, 
allowing us to see the billboard, so turning the visibility of the billboard on and off to show a player that an interaction is available at this location. So first, let's start with the event begin play. So I'm going to create a variable down here, which is going to be our referenced light array. And we're going to change this to variable type light. It's going to be this one right here that just says light. It's going to be an object reference. And in the top uh, right in our details panel, right now we can see this little icon here. That's this little straight line it means it's a single reference. We want to change this to an array. So we're going to select array, compile, and we're going to use this. We're not going to enter any values here. Instead, we'll hit the eyeball out here so that we can expose it to the blueprint in the environment. So now this allows us to add elements here in which I can use the eyedropper to select a value. So I've now referenced this light. So what we also want to do is we need a way to cache each respective light in an array. So let's say we want to turn off five lights at a time. We need to have the expected value of each light. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to press Control D to duplicate this light array. And I'm going to change this to light and intensity map. And we're going to use a map in seven array. So again, we're going to have the selected in the top right. We're going to go down to map and we're going to change the value type to float. And what this does is let's say I have five lights. This basically allows us for each value of reference light in a map, we can set a respective float value for its intensity. So I'll show you how that works. So on begin play, what we're going to do is we're going to take our reference light array. So I'm going to drag it into my graph and say get and say for each loop. So we're going to loop through all the values in the array. I'm going to get my referenced light and intensity map. So I'll say get we're going to say add to the map. So we're going to drag this in here. So for each of these, we're going to create a new key in the map. And then we need to get the intensity of it. So I'm going to say get light component. And this is a tricky one. because It's going to be all the way at the bottom. So we're going to get the light component. We're going to say get light intensity. Like this and drag this in here. And then I'm going to the end set intensity of the light component. So I'll just actually drag this in here. We're going to set it to zero. So basically we're going to turn it off by default. And then in the very beginning, we're also going to set visible to false. Like that. So I'm going to draw a comment over this by dragging and then pressing C. And I'll say cache at begin play. So we can keep this clean. Awesome. We'll continue by adding some functionality for the on and off event. All right, so before we add the functionality here, we're actually going to add our call from the character so we can see this logic pass through. So in my content drawer, you'll find your third person character, which we're gonna be using the template character. So I'll double click into this and we're going to use not an action event, but we're just going to use a simple key press. I'll allow you later to do the action event as you choose. But I'm going to type keyboard and I'll scroll down to my E key. So I'm going to use keyboard E. And then so every time this happens, we're going to call to our switch. So I'm going to drag off here. And what I'm going to say is get overlapping here I'm going to pull off. It's going to be just on the graph. So we're going to say get overlapping actors. And then we're going to say of type actor. And we'll say for each loop. Drag in here. I'm going to say does implement interface. And in theory, when you call an interface event, it actually sort of checks us under the hood, but we're just going to do it like this. So you can sort of understand. And we're going to say, does it implement the interface BPI underscore simple interaction? And if true, 
we're going to call the event uh, interact with world object with world object and then we're going to drag the array element in here in theory this does the exact same thing that happens in this under the hood and code so if you see in this little message it says this does nothing if the target does not implement the required interface but we're just going to keep this for now so we'll compile and we'll save and so this is going to say on e if we're overlapping fire this event on that object so we'll test that out by just putting a little print string here and we'll it'll it should say hello when we overlap so i'm going to drop into my map i'm going to overlap and i'll press e e e e, e and we can see in the top left that we're getting a debug debug print string so that's all great so now let's continue to adding our functionality so what we're going to want to do is test is is the light set currently on and we're going to basically change the logic dependent on that so i'm going to add um i'm going to add just a branch so i can pull off and create a new boolean from it so i'm going to say promote to variable and i'll say lights currently on delete this branch and first i'm going to grab my reference light array i'm going to drag it onto my graph and i'll say for each loop I'm going to drag this execution pin in here. Pull this over here. And at the end of this is, you know, like what we're doing essentially is setting the intensity of the light. So I'm going to grab this and this from up here just so I can copy it. So I'm going to control C, control V. So now I'm just going to drag this in here. And but now what we need to determine is what light intensity do I set? So this is dependent on the current status. The lights are currently on, we want to turn them off. If the lights are currently off, we want to turn them on. So I'm going to pull off here and I'll say select float. I'm going to drag my lights currently on into the pick A. And effectively, this is going to be our fault, our true value, which means lights are on, we want to turn off. And here is lights are off, we want to turn on. So if they are currently on, that means I want to set the intensity to zero because I want to turn them off. And actually, I don't need this. Um, so now this is where we're going to use our map. So I'm going to pull my map up here. I'm going to say get intensity map. <clears throat> and I'm going to say find. I'm going to pull my array element into here up a little bit and then I'm going to drag this into my B value and so basically what this is saying I'm gonna this in here is take all my lights if I'm currently on I want to set the value of all of my lights to zero because I want them to be off and if they are currently off I want to find what their cached value is and I'm going to set it to that by finding it in the map and then pulling that into the selected value. Awesome. And at the end of this, what we're going to do is we're going to copy this lights currently on. We're going to paste it down here. We're going to say set lights currently on to the opposite of what we currently have by using a not boolean. So I'm going to drag this in here. I'm going to drag this over here. And now we also want to sort of set the sprite that we've used for the billboard to the opposite of what it currently is. So I'm gonna drag my billboard down here. I'm gonna say set sprite. We're gonna drag off here and say select. And I'm going to say, I'm gonna copy this lights are currently on, drag this in here. And our false value is going to be <clears throat> the S underscore light Let's see, let's find this. The point light, the light point, and then the false is going to be S underscore light error. So this is going to be the, the same logic of is it on or is it off? And we're going to use the opposite value. So if it is on, we want to say turn it off. Um, so that kind of thing. So I'm going to set the sprite. Move this over here. And that should be good.
Um, now what we need to do is one final set of logic where we're going to use our overlap sphere. So we're going to add on begin. We're going to right click and we're going to say add on component end. And we're going to pull off actor. We're going to say cast to character. We're going to use just the parent C++ class instead of the blueprint class here. So it's just character instead of BP third person character. If it is a, if it is a character, we're going to get our billboard and we are going to set visible to true. And when we leave the volume, we're going to copy all this. We're going to set visibility to false. So basically when I enter, it allows us to see the little sprite, the little light bulb. And when I exit, it turns it off. So I'll copy this. I'll say overlap just to keep things clean. And then we'll go test it. I'll copy this and I will say interaction from character. Compile, we'll save. We'll test it on this one first. I'll play from here. So we see that it's off. I'm gonna overlap. The light bulb's going to appear. I'm gonna press E on my keyboard and we'll see that it turns on and off. Awesome. We'll want to make a quick note that the starting values of these do matter. So it says lights currently on is true. So we want to make sure this is false to start. And we could, you know, in theory, set this to false on begin play just to make sure that this is uh, set to a proper default. And that should be good to go. So now you'll see that if I were to drag multiple lights, I can, because this is an array, add more elements to the array. So I'll say one, two. I'm even going to change the color of these to make it extra fancy. And I'll play. They're all off. I'll see the element on my UI. And they will all turn on. And when I exit, the UI indicator will turn off as required. So that is all for today's video. I hope you enjoyed this and learned something new. Thank you all for watching and subscribe for more Unreal Engine 5 content. Have a great day.